Ladies and gentlemen, the John Stewart interview, in which Mr. Stewart gives a lengthy and what is, in my view, mostly but not entirely fair critique of cable news as improperly elevating partisan distinctions between us as Americans, in which Mr. Stewart describes what he sees as different rules for what he does as a satirist and for what we on cable news do, and I frankly don't buy it, not at all, not even for a minute, in which Mr. Stewart gives a defense of George W. Bush on the Iraq War and waterboarding, a defense which I don't really agree with, but I think was very interesting to hear and which I think was very well put. In which John Stewart, John Stewart does not throw up, uh, despite having a really acute, horrible stomach thing, the poor guy. Uh, the John Stewart interview is right here. John Stewart, thank you for coming in. I know you're under the weather. It's nice of you to come in. I have the bubons, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I'm here to take me medicine. You are here at the 24-hour the political pundit perpetual panic conflictinator. Yeah. Conflictinator, by the way, is a reference to Phineas and Ferb, the cartoon. Oh. The, uh, the evil Doofenshmirtz, Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Uh, <laughs> my kids watch it. Everything he makes is an innator. My conflictinator. So that's... Um, you don't do all that many interviews. I think I've done. I think I've read every one that you've done oh, in the really? past couple of years because I, right. I tend to over prepare. Uh, why did you? Why did you want to talk to me? Why did you want to do this? Uh, after the rally, you know, uh, whenever you go out there, we whatever you put out, you can only control your intention. You can't control its perception or how people receive it, and you can control your execution. Uh, so when people are perceiving it as something, people that I respect are perceiving it as something that uh, we didn't perceive it as, sort of either two or three things. One is we were inartful in the way that we conceived it and presented it. Uh, our intention was wrong or off, not clear, uh, or it's being misperceived. So I guess it's, there's probably, there's probably a fourth. <laughs> I don't know what that would be. On the issue of, um the perception of the rally in media. Um, Bill Maher said, Bill Maher's criticism of it was this. He said, when John announced his rally, he said that the national conversation is dominated by people on the right who believe Obama's a socialist and people mm -hmm. on the left who believe 9-11 was an inside job. But I can't name any Democratic leaders who think 9-11 was an inside job. Right. Republican leaders who think Obama's a socialist, it's all of them. Yeah, I mean, that's a paraphrase of what we said, again, that's probably in our We didn't say 9-11 was an inside job. What we said was, uh, these are Marxists on the left, and that Bush went to war in Iraq. And I, I can't even remember exactly Bush's what Bush is Hitler was. and Obama's no, Hitler. No, it was something, but, but it was more about uh, that 9-11 was a chance for Halliburton to get their hands on oil contracts. And so it's, again, I, I, I take his point. It's a fair point, but I don't... That's not exactly what we said, and mm -hmm. it's certainly not, I think, that's not the seminal thrust of what we were saying. Um, again, the intention was not to say that, peop that's, that that's people on the left and that's people on the right. The intention is to say that we've all bought into that the conflict in this country is left and right. Mm. Liberal, dem liberal, conservative, red, blue. And all the news networks have bought into that. CNN sort of started it. They, they had this idea that, you know, the fight in Washington is Republicans and Democrats. So why don't we isolate that and we'll stand back here and, and that's, you know, Democrats and Republicans will go at it. Red and blue staters will go at it. And what it does is it amplifies a division that I actually don't think is the right fight. But if what you're asking me is, do I believe that? What, what he's saying, that's what I believe? No. But what I do believe is both sides have their way of shutting down debate. And the news networks have allowed these two sides to become the fight in the country. And I think the fight in the country is corruption versus not corruption. Hmm. Extremists what, versus regular. Do you understand the, what I'm saying? The, yeah, but what's the lefty way of shutting down? Well, I mean, I... Okay, yeah. you, you've said... Uh, Bush is a war criminal. Now that may be technically true. In my world, war criminal is Pol Pot, or the Nuremberg trials. Or Harry it's Truman, not saying but he's, then you took that back. Yeah, yeah. And, and I did for good reason, because yeah. I don't think he was. And I think that, you know, again, we have to define our terms. But I think that's such an incendiary charge that when you put it into conversation as, well, technically he is, that, that may be right, but it feels like a conversation stopper 
not a conversation starter. The complaint was, in the clip reel, we had a woman shouting as an example of uh, dialogue that we were talking about not being helpful. A woman at a meeting shouting, Bush is a war criminal. That's really where that came from, not yeah. from saying it in normal conversation. Right. We were talking about tone there, not content necessarily. We were talking about standing up in the middle of a meeting and just shouting that. Right. My problem is it's become tribal. And if you have 24-hour networks that focus, their job is to highlight the conflict between two sides where I don't think that's the main conflict in our society. That was the point of the rally, was to deflate that idea that that's a real conflict, red and blue, Democrat, Republican. But I, I feel like there's a bigger difference between people with kids and people who don't have kids right. than red state, blue state. But I, th th I guess the, the, the way I, and I, f I follow your logic and I believe what you're saying <laughs> up until a point. And the I'm point, glad somebody's following. No, I, I do follow I your logic. And, but it's, right. I mean, the people interrupting, people interrupting meetings and interrupting rallies are direct action activists who are doing stuff to be purposely disruptive and a pain in order to okay. sort of throw a wrench in the works. Right. And then on the, and then on the other side... So you're it's, saying that it's, it's really nothing? Well, it's not that it's nothing, it's just not being done with the same level of authority as it is on the right. Okay. Like the Second Amendment remedies thing, right. that's people running for Senate. But how did you, how did you handle town hall meetings when Tea partiers interrupted the town hall meetings with the same level of dismissiveness? Or did you handle it with the sense that, what's going on here, these angry people? Who are these angry people? Well, my coverage of that was about it being organized. Okay. Yeah. But again, that is, the, your coverage of it was to delegitimize it. That it was actually not real, it was AstroTurf. No, actually no. no it was, a, I think, my, my approach to that was to say this is being used as a widespread political tactic mm -hmm. by people with a lot of money and a lot of stake in the policy issues. Right. And they're sort of deploying direct action activists would you in a way that, that we haven't seen before. Would you say that the general spirit of the block of coverage on MSNBC was as uh, dismissive of the woman who stands up and says Bush is a war criminal? or the people at the town hall. Do you think that they were l viewed through it the same prism? I, I think that they were viewed through an appropriately proportional prism because I think Code Pink is like 12 ladies and I think that literally half of Indiana says they identify with the Tea Party. And so- but again, you are, you know, they say they identify with the Tea Party. What does that mean? Yeah. Identify how? Identify with their, the, the idea that they like smaller government or identify with yelling in a town hall? This is, I, I'm not saying, look, I love the voices that I hear on MSNBC, and there's a difference between, here's what's unfair about what I do. This is really what's a great, here's a great thing that I think is unfair. You're one person with one great voice and uh, sincere and study, but I, I'm a climate scientist. Mm -hmm. I study weather patterns and climate. You, you're, you're talking about the weather and maybe these networks are not meant to be viewed in aggregate, but there is an aggregate. There is an effect. And when people say, well, you're influential too, I'm a 22 minute show. And when I say, the, you know, puppets making crank calls in front of me, I don't mean that to diminish comedy. I mean that that is not then reinforced through the next person. It's not a relay. And there is a, a amplifying effect to the relay. Yeah. And this is not, you know, I don't, I, I want to make perfectly clear because I, I think if the argument is you do exactly what Fox do and you're as bad as Fox, anybody who has watched our show in any measure would understand the special place in our hearts <laughs> for Fox. Yeah. So I, I, again, it feels to me like false equivalence sounds like something that you're doing as well. We have a tendency to grant amnesty to people that we agree with and to overly demonize people we don't. I do the same thing. I think everybody does. If you would like to write to me in defense of Code Pink, I'm all ears. I was just trying to make the point about the difference in size of the disruptive pants brigades on each side. But go ahead.
send your hate mail to rachel at msnbc.com. I promise to read it. Uh, and while you're at it, here's fair warning of what is ahead in my continuing interview with Mr. Stewart. Fox is not partisan either. They're really not. But they never criticized George W. Bush for anything, even when he uh, was doing things that were sort of not conservative. They yeah, never criticized him. But they're not, but that's, they are ideological, but they're not, I don't know that they're partisan.